I'm currently a student mastery program from the Instituto Politécnico Nacional. And today I will present my research uh, topic that uh, Amy uh, have a uh, visual based uh, real time driver drowsiness detection system using uh, convolution neural network or CNN. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will talk about the following main points uh, the introduction, a proposed algorithm, experimental results. I will read uh, some conclusion and finally I will show some reference uh, for important for this uh, research. Okay, I start the introduction. Uh, in Mexico, three of, uh, of ten car accidents are caused by people uh, who fall asleep driving that represent approximately 150 billion Mexican pesos. In addition to the relevant uh, human uh, losses, Therefore, uh, the main point of the research topic is be able to uh, reduce uh, the debt is the principal point of the, uh, this uh, research. And another point uh, is uh, the reduce the expensive and based uh, in this type of accident. Additionally, the implementation of a research uh, to a system or a reduced development board. And this board is a uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Uh, this board uh, can monitor uh, the driver in real time. Okay, uh, we will talk uh, about the background. Uh, throughout the investigation, uh, we have found different forms of accident prevention, uh, which I decided by uh, in principle uh, to prevention. The first is the indirect prevention, and the second is the direct prevention. Uh, well, in this presentation, only I will uh, just talk the direct prevention, more specific the visual based system, because I don't have so much for uh, told the old system. But in the paper, I have a resume the old system and the old direct prevention. Okay, the visual based system in resume is a video camera that takes some frames in a, a, a specific a phase in a specific region. This specific is a driver phase. Uh, the system can determine some things, for example, uh, determine when the the, uh, the uh, driver jawing or determine the, uh, some expression, the facial expressions, and determine the driver's drawings. But uh, this system can determine uh, one uh, point in, in specific that is determined the driver is sleeping. Uh, taking uh, this onto account, uh, uh, we propose the following algorithm. That uh, the algorithm has uh, five uh, principal phases. The first is uh, the first phase is that take that the, uh, the elements that I need to study. The algorithm uh, take a video stream. Uh, this video stream is a video in real time. Uh, the algorithm uh, uh, separate the video, the, the video. Jonathan, your your microphone is is uh, is muted. Oh, sorry. Uh, the old presentation uh, uh, silenced the bo my voice. No, just for a few se for a few seconds. Ah, uh, okay. Um, what is like? Um, uh, uh, so we were in slide seven, seven. Ah, uh, seven, and this, yes. and this part. Okay, sorry. 
Okay, uh, well, uh, I start uh, another time. Uh, I my algorithm has uh, five uh, main phases or five principal phases. The first is take a, a video stream that uh, the algorithm they separate in frames because the algorithm detects the frame to frames uh, one to one for the take the uh, well. Uh, when I need uh, elements to study. Uh, next, I use a uh, algorithm, uh, Viola Jones, that detect the region I need to study. In this case, is the driver phase. Uh, next, I uh, applicate uh, one specific shallow convolution neural network that. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ahí está. That. Um, uh, <coughs> the, the convolution um, uh, uh, separate in into uh, different type uh, in this uh, when I applicate the convolution neural network uh, can difference uh, when the, dri the driver uh, has the A's open or close open uh, the specific uh, solo uh, convolution neural network is a uh, Implement is uh, implemented, uh, which is specially designed uh, to have good uh, performance with a little recourse when determining if driver has uh, the A's uh, open or uh, A's closed. Okay, with the results that the neural network gap, uh, the algorithm uh, analyzes the that uh, decision uh, uh, made. In the future, for example, uh, can uh, um, activate one uh, audible alarm or uh, continue the uh, the, alarm, uh, the algorithm uh, running. Uh, in resume, is the all algorithm is not very difficult to understand. Uh, in this part, in this slide, uh, we can see graphic the process that Viola Jones algorithm takes the take the phase region. Uh, okay. In Viola Jones uh, algorithm uh, use a, a hard future and integral image for detect the uh, patterns that the recognition uh, for uh, recognize uh, for uh, the driver uh, face in this case um, use uh, the bust classifier uh, for this car uh, discard rapid no face object. In this case, in this case, uh, we can see uh, who Viola Jones that take the uh, the, the driver face. In this case, uh, and we uh, we can see the structure that I use for create the uh, convolution neural network. Uh, we can see that I use the three convolution layer and three max pooling layer. Okay. Uh, I use one hidden ledger with 180, uh, 128 uh, neural network. And finally, I use one hidden ledger with, I use one uh, neural network uh, who uh, uh, is a uh, sorter. Okay. Um, while I was researching and realized that uh, there are three states that they will always be present. Uh, the first is when the person has the A's open. Um, the second is when the person blink. Uh, and the finally is the when the person uh, is sleeping. Um, uh, for the, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, well, uh, to have two difference uh, when the person is sleeping or only blinking, uh, I generate this uh, algorithm. Uh, this algorithm is mm, not very difficult. I only need the region I need to study. Next, applicate the, the convolution neural network that the, the convolution uh, have two possible uh, answers. The first is when the person has the eggs open or uh, the A is closed. If the person has the A's open, I have a, a create, I create one counter that is equal to zero because um, it's not more important for this part. 
and continue the next frame. Uh, otherwise, if the person have uh, uh, the ace closed, uh, in this part is very important because uh, in this part we can difference whether the person is sleeping or only blink. Okay, if the person has the ace uh, uh, ace close, uh, the counter incre increase by one uh, until uh, pass one threshold. Um, if the if the uh, counter pass the threshold, activate the uh, one alarm because uh, that uh, mean that the person is falling sleeping. Uh, otherwise, it's only the person is uh, blink. Okay, in this part, uh, we can see the person. Uh, close the uh, ace and pass the threshold and activate the audible alarm. In this part, we can we can see uh, that only blink uh, because don't pass the threshold. And um, is okay. Uh, I will uh, show some re experimental results. Okay, uh, we use one. Uh, data set uh, that is normally used for this uh, research, this type of research. And in this case, the name is NTHU triple D. Uh, contains uh, 18 subjects uh, the, uh, with uh, males and females uh, with different uh, ethnies. Uh, with uh, used as uh, uh, some um, uh, different accessories, for example, uh, some people use uh, normal glasses, sunglasses, uh, or only without glasses. And uh, another p uh, uh, important point is that uh, use different types of the illumination, the visible bright and the infrared. Uh, uh, the infrared. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I use a uh, four thousand uh, six hundred twenty phase image for training and testing of the convolution neural network. Okay, in this part only we can see that uh, the behavior that the convolution neural network have at the time the training. I use 90% uh, uh, a face image for the train and the rest uh, I use for evolution. And this part is uh, some uh, characters that the uh, PC I use for the odd test. Okay, in this part, we can see a uh, resume the algorithm. We can see uh, some uh, uh, one point important. In this part, the algorithm detects the, uh, the region phase and detects the person has the ace uh, open. In this part, uh, the algorithm don't detect, uh, doesn't detect uh, when detect the, the, the person and show one alarm that say, uh, come on, uh, put attention of the way, <laughs> and, uh, and activate one uh, um, on audible alarm, and visual alarm, in this part we can see. In this part, uh, we can see uh, who the, the audible alarm uh, stop uh, uh, with the visual alarm, because the algorithm detects the region phase, and this part we can see the ace open. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we can see that the uh, uh, the algorithm don't det uh, detect that the person has the ace close and pass the threshold uh, and detect that is the person is sleeping and activate one audible alar audible alarm and um, visual alarm. In this part, uh, uh, stop the visual because the that the other person uh, has the ace open. Okay, okay. In this part, uh, if you want to uh, uh, watch the all test, you can only scan the QR or copy the the link and open in YouTube. Uh, this is the control test. Uh, este, this is the real time test. E, this is the data set test. Uh, I will read uh, some conclusion. Uh, car accidents are part of a great problem, which is uh, composed uh, 
uh, of some factor when this in the driver of sleep while driving. Currently, these types of accidents are rise uh, for some reason. Implementation various system to reduce them is uh, of higher importance. Our proposed system or algorithm can only combat uh, this problem, but it has also been uh, shown uh, that you that it's used in real time is feasible to do it uh, to its low computational cost and good precision, which uh, will help save lives and reduce the annual expenditure allocated on this accident. Uh, okay, and um, uh, this is the all uh, some re uh, reference what that I use for this um, research and only I say thank you uh, very much for the attention. If you have a question, I will gladly answer them. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for your presentation. Uh, not sure if someone from the public uh, has a question for Jonathan. Uh -huh, yes, yes. Um, what yeah, is the there's a hand here. Luis Ernesto, please. I'm not sure if you uh, uh, can open your microphone. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Thank Go you. On. Just a, a little question. You have a, a software developed that you uh, must uh, run uh, uh, in real time. Uh, oh, tell me, what is the, the complexity of the algorithm? The computational complexity of the algorithm. You seem that it's exponential, but uh, okay. Um, uh, well, and I um, I don't know. Well, it's not very uh, shallow because uh, the uh, conversion network is not very uh, is not a shallow be uh, because I need to use a com use algorithm in a board uh, in a board uh, development. Uh, um okay i don't know um have you made a uh, test uh, in real time uh yes yes yes, yes. i i have some uh you you need to, uh, that uh what on millis milliseconds okay well the that the, the, the i i don't have the milliseconds but i have the frames uh with i use um the pc test uh the Frames uh, is at 20, uh, 14, uh, not 14 uh, FPS uh, when the take uh, the driver uh, face and the take the 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 dropness, but when don't detect the uh, nothing, the detect uh, don't detect the driver face, the the algorithm uh, run in uh, dirty. Dirty FPS is uh, uh, is obviously because in this part a uh, run when the normal video, but uh, in real time um, a run in uh, 16 FPS when detect detect the driver face, but don't detect uh, the driver face run in uh, 20. Three uh, FPS. Okay, you will need to to, to uh, calculate uh, the the computational uh, complexity. Okay, this, this is good for your research. Okay, because uh, more okay, I'm, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's is there another another question from the public? I, I saw one uh, hand up. <laughs> Not sure if. Uh, no, no, no. OK, so uh, yeah. No. OK, OK, Jonathan. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, we will continue with the next one. It, for uh, time reasons. Um, thank you very much. Uh, stop. Yeah, yeah, please. I think it's, yeah. Okay, I, thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Jonathan. Uh, so the next uh, paper is uh, titled Discovering Structural Simple Workflow Nets by Vector-Based Trace Clustering. And the authors are Cesar Barron and Ernesto Lopez. Yep. Uh, so uh, Cesar is going to present, I, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So go yeah. ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, well, just a, a few instructions before. If it's possible for the speaker, uh, please open your, 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 your camera so we can have a better discussion. Uh, also for, for the next speakers, uh, also are encouraged to open their, their camera. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, hello everyone, I'm Cesar Barron and I'm going to present our paper entitled uh, Discovering Structurally Simple Workflow Nets by Vector-Based Trace Clustering. Uh, this work was carried out with Ernesto Lopez from Simvestab in Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, the presentation is organized as follows. Uh, after a brief introduction, I will explain the trace clustering approach to derive uh, simpler models. Then I will describe the proposed method for trace clustering. Uh, afterwards, experiments on real life event logs will be shown and finally conclusions uh, will be given. Uh, process discovery is the problem of building a formal discrete event model from a set of executions of a real process. Uh, executions of a process given as uh, event sequences are stored in an event log. Uh, event sequences are usually called uh, cases. In the event log, uh, events have uh, multiple attributes, for example, uh, case identifier, event identifier, activity name, information about who performs the activity, etc. Uh, however, uh, to discover the flow of control, only three attributes are enough. Uh, the case identifier, the event identifier, which records the order in which the event occurs, and the names of the activities. Uh, in addition, uh, the actual names of the activities are not required, so they are represented by alphabetic symbols. Uh, therefore, a, a case uh, the, or the cases can be considered uh, as sequences of, of symbols, also called uh, traces. Uh, well, in this research, we deal with workflow nets, which are a subclass of P3 nets. Uh, workflow nets have a, an input place without any input transition, an output place without any output transition. Then, uh, if we add a transition connecting the output place to the input place, the, the resulting net is uh, strongly connected. Um, well, uh, after this clarification, the discovery problem can be more precisely stated as follows. Uh, given a, a neben log, obtain a workflow net uh, able to replay the behavior represented by the traces in the event log. Um, the representativeness is evaluated using uh, four quality measures, uh, fitness, precision, generalization, and complexity. Uh, this work is focuses on complexity and the objective is to support the discovery algorithms to obtain less complex models. Uh, a usual way to deal with complex models is dividing the log into sublogs and discovering a workflow for each sublog. Uh, the idea behind this is that the model's structural complexity is due to diverse process variants gathered in the event log. Uh, then uh, it is expected that each trace cluster contains traces of only one process variant. Now, there are several ways to perform trace clustering. Uh, the proposed method follows a, a two-step approach. Uh, the first step is, is to transform each trace into a vector, and the second step is to apply a, a data clustering algorithm. Uh, the problem is, is to transform the traces into vectors uh, that store the, uh, the information related to the underlying process structure. Uh, given an event log, uh, what we are trying to do is, is group the traces that were produced by each variant and we assume that the different variants uh, of the process can be identified by their sequential substructures. Uh, for example, th this log uh, contains traces from two process variants and the sequential substructures of this process variant are, are printed in, in the log. For example, 
uh, in these traces, um, the activity A always appears before the activity B, which is a trace of the sequential substructure uh, of the model at the top. Uh, on the other hand, in, in these traces, the activity B is always before the activity A, which is a trace of the sequential substructure of, of this model. Uh, the same goes for the activities C and D. Uh, the respective substructure are printed in, in the log. Yeah. So, uh, if we tried to extract the sequential substructure from the entire log, uh, we couldn't. Uh, there is no non-trivial substructure here. And so, the idea is to divide the log, uh, trying to obtain sublogs in, in which patterns such as those uh, shown in the example are present. Uh, now I, I will present the proposed vector-based clustering method. Uh, we use two trace handling operators called uh, preset and succed. Um, given an activity A and a trace sigma, the, the preset of A in sigma is the set of activities always occurring between two A's and uh, after and uh, before the first A. Uh, for example, in, in this trace, uh, B and D are in the preset of A because they are between the two A's and before the first. Uh, similarly, a uh, subset of A of A in sigma is the set of activities always occurring between two A's and after last A. In this trace, uh, C is the, the subset of A. So uh, these sets uh, represent the dependency relationship of A in the trace sigma. Uh, this dependency relationship can be captured by, by a vector. For example, uh, going back to our running example, uh, for the activity A and the trace sigma 12, uh, uh, these are the, the preset and subset and respective uh, part vectors of them. Uh, by concatenating both vectors, uh, we obtain a vector that contains information about the, the activities that occurs before A and those that occurs after. Um, if we do the same for each trace, uh, we can build a matrix in which the rows will be the, the previous vectors. Uh, this matrix uh, represents the entire event log from the perspective of the activity A. So uh, this matrix stores the dependency relationship from A within each trace of the even log. Uh, this, which was done for the activity A, must be done for the rest of the activities, obtaining at the end a matrix similar to this one for, for each activity. Uh, if preset of A keeps the activities that always occurring uh, before A in a trace, uh, then Intersecting all the traces, the preset of all the traces, we get the the activities that occurs uh, before A through the entire log, and the same can be done with the subsets. And the union of of these subset, subsets is called occurrence in variable sets and represent the set of activities that always occurs when A occurs, uh, some before, some after, but their presence is implied by the presence of A. Um, however, uh, in our example, these sets are empty. There is no column in the matrix that uh, has only ones, so there is no dependency relationship from A, which is preserved in, in all traces of the, of the event log. Uh, this situation can be solved by, by clustering the rows from the above matrices. For example, uh, clustering this matrix, we obtain a sublog in, in which X occurs always before A and B and Y occurs always after, and another cluster where B and Y are always before and X after. Uh, so uh, dividing the traces into sets with uh, preset and subset are similar. We get clusters in which uh, the activity A have uh, dependency relationship with others activities in all the traces of the cluster. And doing that to H of the matrices, and remember that we have one for H activity, uh, we get a, a set of clusters. Um, these clusters uh, will be the components of a new vector. Uh, to do this, an, an order is assigned to the cluster. In, in this example, if we assuming there are two clusters for H activity, we will have a quantity of components that is equal to the double of the numbers of activities. 
<laughs> a trace will be represented by the clusters to which they belong. For example, uh, for the trace sigma one, we put one in the component corresponding to the cluster uh, to which uh, sigma one belongs, and, and zero to the component corresponding to the cluster it does doesn't belong. Uh, doing that uh, for the clusters obtained from the ring of the matrix. If we do that uh, uh, for the for H trace, uh, we can build a matrix representing the whole log. This matrix contains the encodings of all the traces and is, is and is the the one we need to perform the clustering. When applying a clustering algorithm on this matrix, a trace will be grouped with those traces with which it has the most component in common. As the components are the clusters contained in the in the obtained uh, in the previous step, which represent sets of, of uh, traces in which their dependency relationship of activities are similar. Uh, the clusters obtained in this step will be sets of traces such that the, uh, there are several activities that have uh, similar dependency relationships. Uh, this makes the, the occurrence in variable sets obtained from these clusters uh, large than those obtained from the entire log. In the running example, this is the, the discovered workflow net from the whole log, and these are the workflow nets discovered from each cluster. As we can see, that there is a significant difference in, in the number of arcs. Um, we carried out experiments using two scenarios. The first scenario is the discrimination of process, processes. Uh, three different seven logs are shuffled into a si single log, and then clustering is applied. Ideally, the cluster should match the, the original log. For this experiment, we use three event logs. Uh, the numbers of activities uh, ranges from 11 to 18. The numbers of traces varies widely, but we just used uh, 500 traces from H1. Uh, we used uh, two standard metrics to evaluate the result of data clustering, and we used to compare uh, trace to VEC, a popular method for encoding traces with three different vector size. And the results showed a, a similar performance with, with both methods. Uh, the mutual information is slightly better with our proposal. However, uh, trace to bed uh, with uh, vector size 64 is score highest in, in that use rank score. Okay. Uh, these results are satisfactory considering that the numbers of samples is, is small. Uh, in the second scenario consists of clustering and event log uh, to discover a workflow net from H sublog and measure the complexity of, of the discovered workflow nets. Um, for this experiment, we used an, an event log with 36 activities and used over 13,000 uh, traces. Uh, three complexity metrics specific to workflow nets were used. Again, uh, we compared the result uh, obtained with trace to back. And to get the workflow net, we use the inductive miner and we test with different numbers of clusters. Uh, the experiment uh, shows uh, that the best results are obtained using our proposal for almost all cases. I said when using seven cluster with respect to the is in metric. <laughs> in particular, when five clusters are used, the simplest model are obtained. Uh, the, the metrics are not comparable to each other. Uh, however, the, the relationship between cyclomatic metric, uh, which measures the complexity of the, the reachability graph of the net, and Cardoso metrics, which measures the complexity of the net, is, is narrower uh, with the cluster found by our proposal. Uh, this means that the, the relationship between behavior and structure is more consistent. Uh, in other words, uh, simple models have a uh, simple behavior. In conclusion, uh, we have uh, present a clustering method based on constructing meaningful vector representation for the traces. The method strives to assign a, a vector uh, close to the, to the traces that exhibit the footprint of, of the same sequential substructures. 
uh, the clusters obtained are easily explained if we have in mind the sequential substructure and as future work we need to evaluate the effectiveness of the method with other classes of model uh, not, not only a large class of petri nets but also uh, another kind of notations and thanks for your attention thank you very much cesar uh, not sure if, if uh, the, is there any question from the public uh, I believe you can open your microphone and, and ask yourself. Uh, I cannot see any, any, anyone. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I have one question, Cesar. Uh, I, I'm wondering why, why did you, uh, well, you compare with the, I'm not sure if it's another proposal, trace to vector. But uh, is that uh, a state-of-the-art technique, or are you comparing with a state-of-the-art technique? Yeah, well, um, trace-to-vector is a, a technique uh, based on, on doc to vec uh, a technique from natural language processing. Right. In, in natural language processing, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not uh, very new, but in the process mining field is is uh, a few years that was for, uh, the, was introduced uh, uh, and is the the standard way to uh, transform traces in in um, in vectors right right uh, and and you are yeah you are definitely improving uh, the results uh, trace to vector uh, achieved right yeah uh, and why, um, well, this is uh, just a bit, uh, between those two uh, experimental scenarios, why did you use different uh, databases or yeah, data to, to compare your experiments? Why did you, didn't you use the same uh, benchmark or...? Uh, uh, no, in, in the first scenario, we used three, three uh, event logs that... Yeah. Yeah. Usually, we are used yeah. for for this for this scenario. Is uh, and in the second scenario, we use just uh, one one event log. Yeah, only one benchmark. No. No, in the second scenario. I don't know if you could, could maybe is the next slide I think yeah that one because you you mentioned you only use one event log BPI yeah. yeah is there some reason for doing that well uh, there is not much uh, event logs available public um, this mm. is one of the few that I can download and and use. Um, and is the most common that for use. Uh, right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much, Cesar. Uh, someone from the public wants to ask something. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm, I, I'm not seeing <laughs> the whole public show participants, okay. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much, um, okay. Cesar, again. And uh, we will continue with the next presentation, please. Um, and this one is uh, entitled, oh, let me see, Instant Selection Base on Linkage Trees. And the authors are Wilfrido Gomez, Samuel eh, Omar Tobias, and Gregorio Toscano. Mm, yes. And is Samuel who is going to present. Okay. Yes. Can, can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you and we can see your presentation, so. Okay, I'm going to start, okay? Thank you very much. Hello to everyone. Uh, I'm going to present our paper entitled Instant Selection Based on Linkage Tree. My name is Samuel Omar Tobias Alanis. As an introduction, a new technologies such as the Internet of Things or ubiquitous computing have propitiated a massive volume of multivariate data. This data can be applied to, to machine learning algorithms to get insights and knowledge from, from data. And this data can be represented with a, with a matrix, with n instance, d variables, and c classes. But for extensive data set, building a predictive model in a reasonable computing time is a challenging problem. 
Therefore, in this context, we can use instant selection algorithms. Uh, these algorithms remove redundant information and a subset of instances, which is uh, represented as a capital X hat, is selected from the original data set X. This uh, selected subset uh, should be representative of the characteristics of the data set. Instant selection algorithms are divided into filter and wrapper approaches. The filter approaches preserves statistical information from the original data set and the wrapper methods maximize the performance of some classifier. Um, the evolutionary instance selection employs an evolutionary algorithm, such as genetic algorithm, for example, to find a suboptimal solution within a reasonable computing time. This is due to the vast search space size of the instance selection problem, which is 2 to the n minus 1, where n is the number of samples of the original data set. This method encodes the solution as a binary vector in which each instance is explicitly encoded. For example, if we have a data set with eight instances, therefore we can represent this data set with a binary uh, vector in which the ones represent the samples that will be selected. But this uh, representation has an escapability problem, which is uh, says that the more the data set cardinality, the larger the binary vector. Therefore, the evolutionary instance selection algorithm could cope with a very high dimensional problem. In this context, we, we propose a, a new paradigm using a linkage tree. A linkage tree uh, is defined a dendrogram from a set of samples of some class. For example, let a capital X sub I, the set of instances in the ETH class from the original data set with C classes, his respective linkage tree is a hierarchical cluster tree of its instance obtained with a complete linkage clustering algorithm, in this case. Uh, each instance in the dendrogram is a cluster at the beginning, and clusters are merged using a distance criterion. The linkage tree hierarchy has n sub i minus one levels, where n sub i is uh, the number of samples of the ETH class. For example, in this subsection A, uh, we have a uh, an example of 50 samples of the of the of the of one class. Therefore, uh, from these uh, samples, we can construct a linkage tree. If the, since there are 50 samples, the linkage tree will be will have 49 levels. If we select uh, one level, for example, uh, the 48 level we can uh, create two clusters. And if we variate the values of the levels, we can create different clusters. Now, for uh, for the selected, uh, for the instant selection, we need to create a, li a, a linkage tree for each class. For example, in this case, we have a data set with five classes and 50 samples in each class. And therefore, for example, if we have uh, create a, a linkage tree for a first class of the blue points, we can select uh, some cutoff level. In this case, we select a certain value of a cutoff level, and with this value, we can create four clusters. And therefore, for the selection, we then um, select um, the medoid of each cluster, and this medoid represents the, the, the instance selected. Regarding the cost function on a linkage tree requires finding the optimal cutoff levels, uh, such that the original data set probability density function preserve a reduced number of instances. This cost function has three, three, three values, three parameters, which is H sub IG, C bar sub I, and alpha sub I. H sub IG is a Hellinger distance and measures the similarity between two univariate probability density functions, P and Q, for each predictor and for each class uh, of the original data set and the selected subset, respectively. Uh, C bar sub i is the normalized code of levels since the C sub i is a number of levels of the linkage tree and the linkage tree represent a class and different class can be ha can have different number of samples then we need to normalize this value. Alpha sub i is a penalization factor uh, that avoid losing the proportion of instance within each class since uh, this uh, method works with independent linkage tree for each class. Now, uh, 
To finding the optimal linkage tree cutoff levels requires evaluate the product of the values of the different levels of different the different linkage tree for class. For example, for a balanced data set with 250 samples with five classes, we have a search space of 40, 49 to, to the five power, which is equal to more than two, 282 millions of different possible solutions. And therefore, an optimization algorithm should be used to find the optimal solution in a reasonable computing time. In this case, we select the simulating annealing algorithm, which is a local search method for a global combinatorial optimization and permits a gradual convergence to obtain a good, a good solutions. This algorithm performs a sequence of moves from a current solution to a better one according to a, a, the so-called cooling schedule that constructs the number of iterations. This algorithm accepts uh, from the beginning of a high level of temperature some uh, hoop, hoop hill solutions to guarantee a good exploration, so bad solutions at the beginning to guarantee a, a good exploration and avoid local optima. And uh, as the this algorithm uh, performs, uh, this this acceptance rate is lower as the temperature decreases, and uh, from lower values uh, of temperatures, we can get better solutions. Regarding the initialization, we do the initialization with a random number with a uniform distribution in the range of one and the and the number of levels of each linkage tree for the C linkage trees. We, and the perturbation function to create a new solution from the current solution, we consider a probability value of 0.5. And to reduce the value of the current cutoff level, we uh, perform the equation 3, which is the maximum value between 1 and the current value minus 1. And to increase the value of the cutoff level, uh, we use the equation 4, which is the minimum value of the number of levels in the linkage tree. And the current value of the cutoff level plus uh, plus one. For the data set using these experiments, we use uh, six synthetic data set and nine real world data set with different uh, number of instances and different number of uh, dimensions and different number of classes. The comparative method, we use four, com uh, five comparative methods. The first one is an evolutionary instance selection method that explicitly encode into a binary string, uh, which is a differential evolution, a binary differential evolution that uh, maximizes the, the fitness function f, where hd is a mean of the Hellinger distance of all the pairs of univariate PDFs. And the second term is the fraction of selected instance with uh, that uh, in which n hat is the number of selected instance and n is the number of original uh, samples. For the experiments, we use w equals 0 0.5 to, 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 to get the same relevance of each component. We use 100 individuals in the differential evolution and evolve um, over 2000 generations. Also, we use four classical methods for instance selection, which is the condensed nearest neighbor, the edited nearest neighbor, the decremental reduction optimization procedure tree, and the iterative case filtering. The, the last three methods are based in the key nearest neighbor rule, and in, in our experiments, we use key equal three and uh, neighbors in the experiments. Figure six shows the resulting subset after applying the classical instance selection methods of a synthetic data set called concentric with three classes and two dimensions. Regarding the performance indices, we use uh, the accuracy of a random forest a classifier, the reduction rate, which is the fraction of removed instance of each method, the Hellinger distance complement, which is the same of the Hellinger distance, but is a complement to, to, to optimization, to maximization perspective, and the efficiency which is the trade-off between the accuracy, reduction rate, and the Hellinger distance complement in a form of a geometric mean. Also, regarding the statistical test, to determine the difference, the statistical difference uh, of the proposed approach and the comparative methods, we use the Wilcoxon rank sum test, uh, which was performed to determine the statistical significance within the proposed approach, a linkage tree based on for instance selection and the compare methods. 
Regarding the evaluation framework, we use uh, to the uh, resampling, we use the CAFOL cross validation method with key equal 10. And regarding the random forest classifier, we, we have, we use uh, uh, 1000 bootstrap samples or the number of decision trees. And um, the figure seven shows the evaluation framework of a single experiment in, in which we have a data set uh, that was split in the training and test. The training, the, tra the original training set was uh, passed through the instance selection and the selected samples are passed to train a, a random forest classifier and the model is used to measure the accuracy, the reduction rate of the selected, selected subset the Hellinger distance and the efficiency. Also, we use uh, we use the original data set to train the random forest and compare the measure over an independent test set. Regarding the results of the synthetic data set, we have uh, in the first column the original distribution in the input domain or in the future of the characteristic domain. The second column is the resulting of the proposed approach and in this case, we can see that the proposed approach can preserve the original distribution of the samples in the future space, can obtain a, a, a very a very high reduction rate, can obtain a, a very high PDF preservation, and also therefore uh, can obtain a very high um, accuracy, and therefore uh, also can obtain a very high efficiency. In contrast, the evolutionary instance selection method also preserved the distribution of the, of the samples in the input domain, but attain a very poor reduction rate. The CNN method uh, does, does not preserve the original distribution of the samples, and but attain a, a very good reduction rate. But in this case, this method uh, preserved a instance near to the decision boundaries of the classes. The, the addition nearest neighbor uh, is an addition method that removes noisy, noisy instances, which are instances that are surrounded by samples of the different classes and therefore attain a very poor reduction rate. The iterative case filter method uh, produces a, a subset that does not preserve the, the distribution of the samples in the input domain and create clusters of the different classes and produce an undesirable uh, holes and clumps and clumps of samples. Also, DROP3 produce a, 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 a subset that does not preserve the original distribution in the input domain, and each is a hybrid method of CNN or, and ENN. Regarding the results of the real-world data set, we have the, the original data set attain the, the best uh, accuracy, but the the performance in accuracy of the linkage tree of instance selection and evolutionary instance selection are competitive. Regarding the reduction rate, the proposed approach has a very high uh, reduction rate compared to the evolutionary instance selection method, and also uh, is a very high competitive uh, value of the preservation of probability density function, and has a very uh, a notably uh, and notably outperformed the in terms of efficiency to the evolutionary instance selection method. Regarding the results on both synthetic and real world data set, Figure nine present the average results over the only the synthetic in the subsection A, and the average of synthetic and real world data sets in the subsection B. Above each bar, the average uh, value of the corresponding measure, which is accuracy, reduction rate, Hellinger distance complement, and efficiency, and the dashed line marks the average accuracy obtained by the random forest training with the instance selection. Table three shows the Wilkinson rank sum test results. The rows shows the p-values regarding each performance index, in both the values of p less than 0.05 and the symbols denote that the corresponding method is statistically superior, is equal and inferior respect to the proposed approach. In this case, uh, the proposed approach is uh, outperformed the iterative case filtering and the DROP3 uh, method and is uh, outperformed uh, and is equal in to the CNN method and is outperformed by the evolutionary instance selection method and the ENN method. But in this case, uh, linkage 3 with uh, attain 0 
but the evolutionary instance selection method attains 0 0.9 and the ENN attains 0 0.91, which is a, a very near value. Also, the proposed approach has a very high reduction rate of 0 0.84 and outperform the, uh, the, the values attained by evolutionary instance selection and ENN method and ESF. Regarding the preservation of probability density function, the, the proposed approach will perform uh, all the comparative methods, but the evolutionary instance selection. And regarding efficiency, the proposed approach uh, uh, will perform all the, the, the other comparative methods in terms of efficiency. As a conclusion, the, uh, our, uh, our method is an optimization problem uh, it addresses as an optimization problem to find the optimal linkage tree cutoff levels. Uh, these two objectives are minimized, which is the mean Hellinger distance for the preservation of the probability density function, and the preservation rate, um, which is the reduction of the number of, sam of samples, which is a uh, control with the manipulation of the cutoff levels. These objectives are in conflict. Since so reducing the number of samples reduce uh, the, the original preservation of the distribution probability, the optimizer simulating annealing was capable to finding solutions with cutoff levels that obtain a notably reduction rate with a very high uh, probability density function preservation, and this permitted to get a competitive classification performance of the random forest model and the best efficiency among all the comparative methods. Um, we propose a real value coding or an integer value coding to optimize the linkage tree cutoff levels, unlike explicitly binary encoding in which all the n instances in the original dataset are explicitly codified. For example, the search space of the binary coding is 2 to the n minus 1, and it, our approach is just the product of the linkage tree levels. Um, the experiment results reveal that the proposed approach will perform its counterparts in terms of the efficiency. The proposed approach avoids deleting minority classes because this construct a linkage tree of each class and also minimize the number of selected instances. Future work considers using a multi-objective optimization and the promising results encourage applying this uh, proposed approach in, in large, very large data sets applications. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Samuel. Uh, is there any question from the public? Let's see. Okay, uh, thank you very much again, Samuel. Uh, I have a question. What, what would be the, um, I, I think from the algorithms you compared your proposal to, uh, the evolutionary one based was the closest one, like gave the best in both the uh, synthetic and real data sets, uh, if I'm okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so what, that, 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 the proposed I, approach. Uh -huh. yeah. The proposed approach is a filter method because it's uh, focused on preserving the probability density function or statistical information. And in the principal or the main uh, the, the main contribution of this work is a new codification scheme of these evolutionary instance selection methods because the classical ones using a binary explicitly encoded and this is a this produces a scalability problem. This, uh, then our paradigm is construct linkage trees and just encode, uh, transform this uh, problem into a, a, a search of cut off levels instead a search of a binary space. Right. Therefore, reduce uh, notably the, the search space. And here um, put an example, uh, uh, I was put an example. For example, consider a data set with n equal 40 uh, samples in two balanced data set. The binary code in search space is 2 to the 40 minus 1, which is a very huge, huge search space, only for 40 samples. Well, in the proposed approach is just uh, 361. Right, right. Uh, and how how would you modify your, your proposal in order to target a big data set? You mentioned also like as a future work. Yes. Well, also we need to say that uh, normally these problems are not only addressed just as a filter approach. The, in fact, it's, it's very common to uh, address this problem as a wrapper approach. In, in this uh, in, implies that for uh, every generation, for every individual of the generation, we need to 
uh, train a classifier. Therefore, in these uh, methods, also for a wrapper approach, uh, it, there was a very uh, amount of computational cost, the evaluation. In this case, we just, um, uh, instead of that, we just evaluate a, a probability density function estimation method. And this, is a pro this has a prom promising results. Now, for uh, extends this method to big data sets, we have uh, are now working in some um, um, paradigms of big data sets, such as parallel uh, computation and some uh, these kind of methods that uh, divide and conquer and and so so these kind of, of methods. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Samuel, for your interesting talk. And we will continue to the next talk uh, Thank you. for timing reasons. Um, yes. And the next talk is entitled Comparison of Performance of Two Virtual Stre Screening Software on Acetylcholinesterase Protein Molecular Docking. And the authors are Aldo Tenorio, Dulce Estefania Nicolás, Andrés Reyes, Claudia Mendoza, Brenda Magaña y Víctor Manuel Altuzar. Not sure who is going to present. Okay, yeah, yeah you can, uh, I can see a, a hand raised, but uh, you, you can share your screen if you are going to present this article. I cannot see the, the name. Andres. Andres Reyes. Andres, you're now, uh, you're now, you have permissions to share your screen and offer your microphone. Uh, they say, uh, okay. okay. Uh, I call them. But, uh, yes, I am. I am. Okay. Okay, I come again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see your your screen. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I will What's talk about through camera. I'm sorry, Andres. Oh, my camera. And you use your camera here on team. No. Yeah. Yeah. We are now seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I'll talk about um, two softwares. Our title is Comparison of Performance of Two Virtual Screening Software on Acetylcholinesterase Protein. A molecular talking. We are a multidisciplinary group of uh, researchers from Mexico. Uh, it's from physics to biologists. Our main is um, drug discovery, and we tried with two softwares. Okay, drug discovery process is um, long time uh, to take. New new drugs for new disease and uh, computational tools can um, can help us to uh, discover new drugs with low money we can use uh, computational tools for the for the beginning of the process i can see Okay, I can see the process uh, from drug discovery, the, from drug discovery to clinical trials. Clinical trials are experimental trials from uh, animals to volunteers, people. Uh, we can use ADME prediction, hydropoc screening ADME, that is the, uh, is the approach of this work. Uh, we can use lead optimization that we use a single molecule and we can improve this molecule. Uh, all of these are computational approach that allow you to make 
more efficient experimental uh, experimental trials. Virtual screening uh, is a computational tool that use different tools to screen or select the best molecules. We can use millions or billions of molecules uh, of a database like SYNC, millions of molecules, and the first, uh, the first filter can reduce the, the, the count of molecules. Uh, next, we can do more and more and more filters that the best molecules that can we serve to our disease of objective or our protein target uh, will be synthesized and probed with experimental with animals or with volunteers in preclinical or clinical trial, trials. Now, our work will our work like computational researchers is select the best molecules to in, to the experimental research. Uh, these tools are very useful in drug discovery in, uh, actually. And we can do um, different different tools. Different tools are applied based on computational cost. When we have a million of molecules, we make uh, or we use a tool that is low cost computational. When we have uh, low molecules, we can uh, do um, uh, we can do um, trials that can uh, consume a lot of computational uh, time. Okay, these these are 2D and 3D similarity, pharmacophore, admer properties, QSAR, and molecular docking. This is our train. This is um, the proof that is the most the most uh, computational cost that can be used for virtual screening. We can't do virtual screening with induced feed molecular docking, molecular mechanics, or quantum molecular mechanics or molecular dynamics. We can do because it's it takes a lot of time. Uh, we can do one. This approach can we integrate these algorithms, machine learning, deep learning, deep, dat deep big data, and quantum mechanics. Okay. The software that we use for this uh, for this investigation is Autodoc. Autodoc is a suite of different softwares that can do molecular docking for virtual screening. This is an open source software that we can download and use in any computer, and is is mm, something or not easy. Okay, our target is acetylcholinesterasa. Acetylcholinesterasa uh, is an uh, enzyme that is in the uh, synapses, in the neuron synapses, when acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that excites postsynaptic neuron. So acetylcholinesterase hydrolyzes acetylcholine and stop the stimul. Imposynaptic neuron. If we can inhibit acetylcholine, acetylcholinesterase enzyme, acetylcholine can um, can can have a long time of uh, of life. And the and the yes, and the impulse we and the impulse is more time. Okay, this is our objective. Evaluate the performance of Autodoc4 and Autodoc Pina in virtual screening tests using acetylcholinesterase enzyme. The methodology was uh, a database of DUT of 644 active compounds and 664 decoys. Active compounds are molecules that can active this enzyme, are substrates, 
and decoys are molecules that can be combined to acetylcholine stress, but not that type uh, enzyme. Are decoys. These are negative and these are positive. And a second database where for KMBL, from KMBL, and we, we have uh, 67 inhibitors and 67 substrates. Inhibitors is a negative substrates and substrates are positive. Okay, ligands were converted from PDB, from SDF and PDBQT using OPMABEL. Uh, protein was obtained from protein data bank. This is the code, and we can use USF chimera to uh, to the process, minimizing and clean. And autodoc was um, so molecular docking was was carried out using using autodoc four and autodoc bina. Uh, with different different process well, that I will describe today. Okay, we're automatized with Dracon and batch scripting. Our results show that, yes, Bina results and Autodoc4 results, actives and decoys. There are no difference with actives and decoys. We can't different with Autodoc Bina if I have an active compound or decoy component. Uh, so, positive or negative, we can differentiate in this molecule with this software and the same occur with Autodoc4. We can distinguish from actives or decoys. This is our results. This is our experimental data and we can reproduce this with this software. So this is the data from the, the past uh, graphic. Uh, data are in kilocalories for mole, and there are no difference if it's the decoy or this is active. We hope that this is were lower than the next, but can't. And out of four, uh, the same result. We can distinguish decoy from the active component. Uh, the results active for decoys, the mean, uh, that is the result. Autodocmina active from decoy, active to decoy. Um, there are no, no difference, but we can see that uh, Autodoc 4 are uh, larger than Autodocmina. The data are big, bigger than Autodocmina. This is um, something that we can't compare from one to one, but uh, this is a, a data that we can see. Another result that we can use the another database is an inhibitor from substrate. And we can see any difference. You can see that inhibitor results that from substrate results are equal, really. And we can difference from these molecules to the next molecules. If my molecule of interest from this target is an inhibitor or an substrate. Uh, we can do a uh, test and we try different suite or different straight inhibitor effect. And we can see some different statistical significantly uh, we, when we use um, a random seed, random seed or a fixed seed. CD is a parameter that um, that use Autodoc Bina from to make a stochastic process from this software that we can simulate a different collision or different interaction. If we use a random seed, a random interaction, we can see that there are differences between these uh, two asterisks from two. There are differences, but uh, in a single molecule, we can't see any difference. This is a, a data set and we can make difference. Okay. And this is a, our conclusions that out of four software makes prediction with lower affinity energy than out of Vina. Uh, is that we can compare this, but it's a, and a conclusion. Also, the distribution of stress will present a weather interval with normal distribution against autodoc beta. The normal distribution are this. Uh, this is the mean, 
the quartiles and normal distribution. Mm. The affinity energy determination alone does not distinguish between the active or the coys or agonist or antagonist compounds. We can we can search for the best molecules that have the best energy of, of affinity, but in the experimental test, we can't uh, predict if my compost will be an agonist or antagonist uh, effect. Then uh, other physical chemical variables must be included during the virtual screening studies. And this algorithm can be improved to distinguish if we have an agonist or antagonist. This is uh, an opportunity for computational and physics um, developers that can apport in, in drug discovery. Um, this is all for me and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Andres, for your presentation. Uh, is there any question from the public? Okay, I have a question, Andres, for you. Uh, based on the conclusions you are reporting uh, on, do, on these two uh, software tools, which one is the which one is the best? Or do you have a uh, yeah? If you have a, a of, if, of you if you guys have decided uh, one if the is the best of of the two tools? Okay, the best or, for me is Autodopina because it's more fast. Sorry, it's faster than Autodoc 4. Mm -hmm. It's faster and can predict with un, with a larger interval than Autodoc 4. Right. Uh, but um, we can yes. use both mm -hmm. and we can compare the results. Right. Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper use both both softwares and compare and report both results. Right. And uh, you mentioned before uh, some uh, computational techniques such as machine learning, deep learning. Uh, do you know which ones are working in these two softwares? Yeah, these software are the base of this software were, were made with machine learning, but uh, machine learning of um, Basic machine learning because Autodopina was developed on 2009. Right. And it's all, but it is it is the most used uh, mm. software mm. in drug discovery for free license right. because there are commercial software, but uh, it's it's expensive. Yes, yes, that should be very expensive. Uh, okay. Uh, any question from the, the public? If you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Andres, again, and uh, we will continue with the next presentation, uh, which is entitled Automatic Generation of Test Cases from uh, Formal Specifications Using Mutation Testing. And the authors are Roman Jaramillo, Raul Gonzalez, and Pedro Mejia. I can see Roman Jaramillo, not sure if. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. You can share your screen. Great. Perfect. And also, if you can open your camera oh. and. Uh, okay, okay, yes, wait. <laughs> just. Uh, you can see me now, right? Uh, yeah. Here. Okay, okay. If you can. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. Go on. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Roman Jaramillo. I'm an engineer and uh, I'm almost concluding my master's degree at Simvestad Guadalajara. And I'm going to present our paper called Automatic Generation of test cases from formal specification using mutation testing. Here is the table of content. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction and some background. And then we're gonna see some related work. Uh, 
Next, we're going to see the most important parts of our work, which are implementation, contribution, results, conclusion, and finally, um, some references used in our work. Well, when we're developing software, some time and resources are spent in testing it. As you can see in this image of software development lifecycle, the testing is an essential part of the developing process, regardless of the methodology that is being used for the development. The software testing life cycle generally looks like this when developing software. Uh, the only parts that interest us is, are the requirement review and the test cases. In the requirement review, um, all the specifications are detailed and then the test cases are created accordingly uh, to match these specifications. Test cases can be generated uh, manually or automatically. We are interested in automating this task uh, for all the benefits we can see in this image. It's quicker, it's more accurate and precise. Well, the generation of test cases depends on the criteria that is being used. Uh, it can be code coverage or it can be mutation score. We chose mutation score as the criteria because there are already several papers working on code coverage and because having a test suite that achieves high mutation score uh, will also achieve a high code coverage. We use two approaches, uh, the specification based testing and the mutation testing. Inside the specification based testing, we have formal specifications that work with formal languages and the formal language we use in our work is SOFL. Uh, for mutation testing, uh, mutation testing can be used uh, to generate test cases or to perform a mutation analysis which assess the quality of a test suite. Moving to the background, uh, the first topic is first order logic also known as predicate logic. This mathematical tool allows us to write specifications or predicates in a formal way. For example, a predicate that states that X is greater than Y can be, great, can be written in natural language, can be written with mathematical notation, or can be written as a first order logic predicate, uh, where is denoted as G of X and Y, where G is a relation symbol, and this expression is also called atomic formula, atomic predicate, or just an atom. And is considered true whenever X is greater than Y. A literal is an atom on the negation of an atom. A clause is a finite collection of literals. When the literals are in a disjunction, it is called disjuncting clause. And if the literals are in a conjunction, it is called conjunctive class. The disjunction of one or more conjunctive classes is called disjuncting normal form. And the conjunction of one or more disjuncting classes is called conjunctive normal form. OK. SOFL <clears throat> stands for Software Object Based Formal Language. It is a formal language and a methodology proposed by Xiaoying Liu for system development. Software integrates formal methods, structure methods, and object-oriented methodology. Also, specifications written in SOFL can be used to automatically generate test cases. Usually, SOFL specifications have the following structures. It starts with the word process, process, where the name of the process is located. Also, input variables along with its type are written here. Output variables are specified along with its type in the next line. Then we have the word pre, uh, where the precondition of the process is located. Then we have uh, the word post, when we have the, the post condition of the process written in the disjuncting normal form. And finally, we, we write the end of the process. Well, the post condition is denoted as S post, and it has N word and N defining conditions, just as seen in this equation. 
uh, when the postcondition is in conjunction with the precondition, it forms a set of functional scenarios. A uh, functional scenario uh, will be the conjunction between the precondition, which is denoted as S pre, uh, a work condition, and a defining condition. Also, the conjunction between a work condition and the precondition is called test condition. Well, the particle form optimization algorithm was introduced by Kennedy and has several applications nowadays. Uh, it is an iterative algorithm that performs good at optimizing functions. Uh, we use it in our work to minimize a cost function that depends on the predicates written in the specifications. This function takes a predicate as a parameter, for example, uh, x is greater than y, and it uh, and if it, uh, the function equals zero when the predicate is satisfied. For example, uh, if x is equals three and y equals two, well then x is greater than y, right? Or any other combination that satisfies the predicate. Uh, but when the predicate is not satisfied, it returns a fit value greater than zero. Okay, as I said earlier, um, mutation testing can be used to generate more test cases. This can be done by generating mutants from the specification. The resulting mutants are used uh, to generate more test cases, but uh, mutation testing can also be used to assess the quality of a given test suite, let's call it T. Um, uh, it generates mutants from the program, the, from the original program, and runs the test suite in each one of them. And if the mutant passes all the tests, it's added to the list called L. Otherwise, it, it is added to the list called D of the test mutants. The mutation score is a number between 0 and 1, and it's defined by this equation. Uh, the mutation score equals 0 when if no mutant is detected, and equals 1 if all of them were detected. Okay, moving on to a related work, we have six papers from different authors. Uh, the first one by Fraser uses model checkers and focuses on the code coverage. The second one uses formal specifications and also focusing code coverage. The third one uses the PSO algorithm focusing on code coverage, specifically uh, using the technique of data flow testing. The fourth uh, one uses time automata and focus in rotation score. The fifth one uh, uses unbounded conformance check and focus in rotation score as well. And finally, we have a paper from Chaoying Liu where he uses software specification and focus uh, uh, focus with in uh, code coverage. Well, uh, for the implementation, the first step was to write uh, manually the specification in software and save them in a txt file. After this, the tool was implemented uh, along with a module for the PSO algorithm following the steps from 2 to 8 and then uh, the tool was tested with five examples. Uh, this is uh, what the tool does. It um, takes the specification uh, in TXT format as an input. It generates the list of functional scenarios which are formed by the conjunction between the post condition and the precondition. Then it creates a list of extended functional scenarios called EFS which are functional scenarios that does not have the operators greater or equal than, less or equal than, or different than. And it generates uh, a test case for each element of the EFS list. After that, a mutation operator is applied also to every element of the EFS list, and a list of functional, uh, functional scenario mutants is created. Each element of this mutant list is used to generate more test cases that are added to the test suite previously created with uh, the test created with the EFS list. Uh, finally, the, the test suite, the, the tool, uh, creates the, the test suite.py, which is a Python test file. Okay. Here's an example uh, of the specification of the greatest common divisor function. 
First, we see the name of the process is GCD. This is an arbitrary name, so it could be called you know, graders or whatever. Then we have the input variables, which are X and Y along with the side. So X and I are integers. In the next line, we have the output variable, uh, which is just R, R in this example, and its type is natural. We have two atoms in the precondition, and we have two elements in the postcondition, because as we can see, we have three disjunction symbols. This one, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. um, the predicates in the pre and post conditions are written in mathematical notation, but also using first order logic. As we can see in this example, uh, we use the universal quantifier represented by the word for all. Okay. Well, finally, this tool um, show uh, save this file. Uh, this is how the test suite is saved. In a, in a Python test file, we use unit test library because uh, after the test suites were generated, uh, they were also assessed using a tool called Moodpy. Moodpy is a tool that uses mutation testing for mutation analysis. It needs a test suite just like this, using mutation, uh, using unit test library, and the code that will be tested. In this image, we see nine test cases created automatically from the specification of the GCD function previously presented. Every test case calls the module GCD with its arguments and with the method assert equal checks if the output given by the program matches with the expected one. Uh, well, the source code of the tool is available in this repository. Uh, if you're interested in it, this repository contains two Python files. One is the model of the PSO algorithm and the other one is the tool that uses that module. Uh, both of them have some comments inside of code in order to understand it. Uh, well, I'm going to plug some instructions to uh, later because uh, if you want to test it, you have to make some changes to the server codes. Okay. Well, our contribution is the use of the PSO algorithm with software specifications as a test case generator and the use of mutation operator in software specifications. Our results are based in five examples. The triangle problem, the next step function, and the commission function were taken from Jorgensen's testing book. And the GCD function and the mod function were taken from a Leo's paper. Two test suites were generated for each of these examples. Uh, T1 is the test suite generated by our tool, and T2 is built by generating a test case for each one of the original functional scenarios of the specification. Uh, as we can see in this table, uh, the first column has the name of the, uh, of the examples. The next one has the mutation score achieved by T1. T1 achieved a mutation score of one in every example, which means that it was capable of detecting all mutants. Uh, the next column has the number of test cases in T1. The next column has the mutation score achieved by T2. Uh, T2 also achieved a high mutation score, but it wasn't capable to uh, detect every mutant. The last column has the number of test cases in T2. It, uh, another important thing to mention is that the number of test cases in T1 is larger than in T2. And this is because the mutation of the specification can create a lot of more functional scenarios that will be used to generate more test cases. Uh, and it will depend on uh, how many mutants can be generated from the specification. Well. Uh, we concluded that our tool shows the effectiveness of the PSO algorithm as a test case generator when used with software specifications and that applying mutation operators to the software specification inside the test case generation process can lead to a test suite that achieves a high mutation score. Here are some references and, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roman, for your presentation. Uh, <coughs> Is there any question from the public? I cannot see any hand. <laughs> yeah, there is one. Samuel. Raise his hand. Uh, you can open your microphone and ask directly. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. And um, my Thank question you. is, what is uh, your reasons to use, for example, a PCO and now a genetic algorithm or differential evolution or another metaheuristic, or wh why specifically PCO in, in this case for this problem? Well, uh, the main goal was not to use uh, the best algorithm, right? Uh, it was just uh, to use an algorithm that performs good. And I think that's the main reason. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't looking for performance or, yes, that, that was not the main reason of my investigation. The main reason was to uh, create a test suite that achieves a high mutation score. So I did it by applying this algorithm. I know that it, I would, I, could apply another algorithm like genetic ones, but uh, this is the one I choose. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Any other question from the public? Uh, okay. I, I have a question. I, I don't uh, remember. You compared your proposal with uh, previously proposed approaches? No, no, no. Uh, I didn't. Okay. Okay, that, that would be interesting to know uh, how, yes. how how it compares with with previously uh, proposed approaches. Um, okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Roman, uh, for your presentation. I'm not sure we have still some few minutes. If someone else has any questions, okay, I I, I don't see any hands up. So thank you very much, Roman, again for your you. presentation, and thank you very much to everyone for being here during this session. I think this one was the last uh, presentation. So uh, thank you very much again, and uh, we'll see you maybe next year. Thank you. Thank you.